Van Ark. Plus, animals just want to have fun, too. Then, Julie. I'm Paul Major. And I'm Joan Steffen. Coming up next on News 11, a weekend twister leaves behind wreckage to clear and grief to deal with in Park Falls, Wisconsin. Farm activists gather to hear of a last-minute deal to save one couple's home. The city of St. Paul is singled out for being the place to live these days. And on Speaks People, we have a pleasant story about a pheasant raiser. Diana Pierce is on assignment tonight. News 11 is next. Blackout. But both families have rechargeable lights. One has ready light from First Alert. The other family has the other leading brand. There's a big difference. Ready light lasts 50% longer on a single charge. Stands by itself and shines the light where you need it. Get the rechargeable light that lasts 50% longer. Ready light from First Alert. Because your family comes first. Look for the full line of ready lights. Father's Day gifts the whole family can use. For every man who wears brute, there's a woman who loves what he smells like. Because there's something about brute that's nice to be close to. And nobody knows that better than a woman. Brute. It smells like a man. Hello? Honey! I was just thinking about you. Brute. It smells like a man. Be a hero to yourself. Don't, Don't smoke. smoke. Smoking is a losing battle. You're watching WTCN-TV, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Now, from the action center of the Twin Cities, News 11 with Paul Majors, Diana Pierce, Tom Ryther on sports, and meteorologist Paul Douglas. Good evening. News 11 was on the scene just a few minutes ago when an explosive device was found in Minneapolis. The device was rooted out by Minneapolis police bomb experts at a South Minneapolis retail store. These exclusive pictures were taken by our News 11 investigative unit at the scene of the emergency on Park and Lake Streets. The device was discovered by the manager of the U.S. video outlet store at about 4.30, and within an hour, police located what they call the anti-personnel weapon and defused it. Tonight, they're investigating exactly what kind of an explosive it was and who may have planted it. No one was injured in the incident. In other news tonight, residents of Park Falls in northern Wisconsin continue the exhausting task of cleaning up after the weekend tornado that killed three left many others injured. Today, Wisconsin Governor Anthony Earle visited the site, as Bernie Grace reports. The countryside near Park Falls, Wisconsin, is littered with homes and scores of trees that were mowed down by Saturday's tornadoes. On Wintergreen Lake today, what boaters saw was destruction all along the shoreline. One lakefront family, the Troyer, still had their doormat, but that was it. The house was blown away. Inside of the time, Brian Troyer. Everything just went over the top of me. It just, like the roof and everything off the house is up on top of the hill. The whole time, I never thought I was going to lose my life. It just seemed that everything was going to blow over the top of me. I knew it was coming. I was always taught to listen for the train, and you sure heard the train coming. Ironically, Brian's parents were away when the tornado hit. They were on their way to Ohio to help victims of the recent tornadoes there. Today, friends and neighbors were trying to salvage what they could. For some people, personal belongings were strewn as far as a half mile away. I don't know. I found parts of the living room in here, and I thought I'd just find some of the pictures and stuff that we can't replace, you know. In Park Falls, Governor Anthony Earle got a first-hand view of the destruction. He saw a lot of people who were trying to put things back together. There were several homes and businesses damaged in Park Falls. Some homes are a complete loss. Maddening thing about it is that some places are not damaged at all, and a place right next door is totally destroyed. I would guess that must be what's so hard to take for people. So what took years to build was destroyed in a matter of seconds. And the survivors from Saturday's tornadoes find it remarkable that there aren't many more fatalities. In Park Falls, Wisconsin, Bernie Grace, News 11. Arson is suspected in an Arden Hills mobile home fire that has left one couple homeless tonight. The smoky blaze spread quickly, and when firefighters got to the home on Banyan, it was too late to save the structure. The couple who lived in the unit could do nothing but stand by with neighbors as fire crews contained the fire. First word of the catastrophe came from a sharp-eyed driver. On Highway 10 and saw the smoke coming out and proceeded to stop myself and another gentleman.
tried getting into the trailer, but it, uh, the smoke was too much, and all of a sudden the flames started bursting through the roof, and there was just no way we could get in. Fire officials say they are looking for an arson suspect seen near the home just before that fire was reported. And in Rochester today, a gas main leak meant evacuation for residents of four homes and some bank customers. Construction work apparently caused that gas line break, which was repaired by early this afternoon. News 11 has learned the final report is out tonight on an air crash disaster drill held in Mendota Heights, and the results are not good. Last April's drill set up a jetliner crash near the airport. Two school buses represented parts of the fuselage, and volunteers acted as victims. Today's report says the command post was a complete failure, with no central clearinghouse and confusion about who was in charge. And different terms and procedures used by different departments added to the confusion. But officials say the point of such a drill is to find out what needs improving before a real disaster faces rescue crews. And the Minneapolis police may suspect one of their own tonight in connection with a burglary fencing bust. Those arrests came at a Minneapolis house late last Thursday night, and now Police Chief Tony Boza says one officer had been seen at that house. The Police Internal Affairs Unit is investigating, and Chief Boza tonight is asking any other officers who may be involved to step forward voluntarily. There is still internal struggling at the state capitol tonight, but so far, no compromise for House and Senate conferees. The last hurdle is the bill to keep state agencies funded for the next two years. Another meeting is set for tonight. Those who live there know it's award-winning, and those who don't are soon to find out. St. Paul has been named a finalist in the contest for Most Livable City, and officials are nearly bursting with pride over that honor. Janet Mason leads a team report. St. Paulites have always known that their city is special. Now a panel of judges from the U.S. Conference of Mayors agrees. St. Paul is one of eight finalists vying for the City Livability Award. The judges cited several reasons for picking Minnesota's capital city. They were impressed with the development of the arts in the city, such as the opening of the new $45 million Ordway Music Theater. The judges also praised St. Paul for the renovation of the World Theater for Minnesota Public Radio's A Prairie Home Companion and the relocation of the famed Actors Theater in the North Star Theater, which is also undergoing remodeling. Singled out for special recognition was St. Paul's Lower Town Redevelopment Project. This building is being converted into loss for artists. The $1.7 million project is a cooperative venture between the city, the arts community, foundations, and local developers. Much of the credit for making St. Paul such a livable city goes to this man, Mayor George Latimer. I doubt that there's another city in America, including New York City, we just had that many new major theaters open up in one year. The winner won't be announced until next Monday, but Ken Speak tells us that at least one person is already pretty confident of the way it will turn out. City Councilman Vic Tedesco says, how can St. Paul lose? It's definitely number one in his book, and he points to park development, like Lambert's Landing here. Says the parks and the neighborhoods are the two main strengths St. Paul has. Of course, a person must recognize Tedesco might be prejudiced. He's St. Paul born and raised, former parks commissioner, 19 years a city councilman, even has a city street named after him. But he says St. Paul is different. Something makes his city more livable than others, but he can't exactly put his finger on it. It's an intangible, I'm sure, but it's there. It's there. It's... We've got a certain uniqueness, individuality. It's, it's just a beautiful city. Tedesco figures the folks naming the most livable city know that uniqueness, and when the Philip Morris Company names the nation's most livable city next Monday, he expects if they've done their homework properly, they'll name St. Paul. Ken Speak, News 11. It's a shoe-in. Well-deserved, you Absolutely. bet. Absolutely. <laughs> Coming up next on News 11, some Egan workers punch out for the last time today. And it was a rally and a reprieve for another troubled farm couple today. That and more next. To bake baked beans this savory, rich, and delicious, you would sort them and soak them, measure in the mustard, slice the bacon, pack the brown sugar, approve the seasonings. Then, bake them in a real brick oven until the sun went down. If you had the time, you could bake beans like this, or you could buy B&M baked beans. There's really no other choice morning paper. Great news about a health plan for people with Medicare. Now Share Senior Care is free to new members. The full protection of Share Senior Care is free to new members till 1986. 
Share, Minnesota's most experienced HMO for seniors, made senior care free so more seniors will join. That lowers individual health costs. Call now about free Share senior care. Shall we? Yeah, yeah, we should. There's so much more to share. If you want a new Ford truck but monthly payments seem out of reach, opportunity is knocking. Midway Ford of Roseville will put you behind the wheel of a 1985 F-150 pickup truck for just $129.40 per month. Yes, for a limited time, our red carpet lease plan lets you drive the best-selling truck in America. $129.40 per month. Opportunity seldom knocks twice. Hurry to Midway Ford today. Oh, yeah, Midway Ford is the talk of the town. The black hole of American business. Where travel and entertainment dollars often vanish without a trace. To help end this financial drain comes a whole new way of booking, tracking, and paying for your company's business travel. Introducing the American Express Travel Management System. It puts you in control, not the black hole. The rumble of tractors could be heard off the fields and in the streets of one Minnesota community today. Another farm protest is what brought the dozen or so tractors and about 100 farmers to the town of Redwood Falls in support of another farm family faced with foreclosure. But it turns out that family struck a deal with their debtors that will keep them in their home for now, as Alan Costantini reports. I say no. Right. What do you people say? No. Another farm foreclosure in outstate Minnesota, this time by Metropolitan Insurance, and another groundswell rally in protest. And at this gathering in Redwood Falls, a happier than usual ending. These people came expecting to rally to stop a sale, but partway through that rally, they got better news than they expected. A deal was struck with Metropolitan, and the sale is off. Arnie and Irene Kaufenberg were in tears at the gathering, but at the 11th hour, an agreement that holds out hope. The Kaufenbergs get to keep the house and 15 acres free and clear of debt. They lose the 260 acres of farmland, but they will get a lease to work the land for two years with an option to buy or lease again at that time. The last-minute reprieve was overwhelming for the couple who have worked the farm for 21 years. We got our home, our place to live. That's because we, we to to didn't know if we were going to have to move or not. Is the two years going to, do you think you can come back in two years and get the farm back? I'm sure going to try. It's going to work. They can only own it for so long. Uh, then it has to get resold. And hopefully we'll be the ones that will be able to buy it back. The Kaufenberg's attorney says the couple and their children have had a very rough time of it, and something should be done on the state or federal level to protect others from the same kind of pain. Alan Costantini, News 11, Redwood Falls. Doing business in Duluth is going to be much more inconvenient this summer. Today, workers closed the main street through the city's downtown business district for resurfacing. That means there is no way to get to hundreds of area businesses except on foot. That project should be completed by summer's end. Our summer-like weather is causing some big problems for Wisconsin farmers. That story is still to come. But Paul Douglas says some rain in our forecast could ease things a bit for them. That and more when we come right back. Hunting for a way to control foxtails and other problem grasses? Get new Fusilade 2000, the total solution for grass control. Volunteer corn and other grasses, volunteering to wreck your yields. Get new Fusilade 2000, the total solution for grass control. It's not a pizza. Not a pizza. It's Priazzo, and it's selling like hotcakes. Only at Pizza Hut. Our deal is used electronics. Business is kind of slow, but just you wait till I get all those personal computers people are gonna buy but never really use. If it was me, I'd go to Computer Land and get the works. The works is a plan where you're going to buy the right computer and get the most out of it. Or you get your money back. Guaranteed. Oh, 
So you can either do business with computer land or with me. I don't give money back to no one. What makes crispy, crunchy, delicious fried chicken? Crisco oil. You start to crisp that chicken. Crisco oil fries up chicken with a crispy, crunchy crust. Crunch that drumstick. Mm, that juicy flavor. And that juicy goodness stays inside. With Crisco oil, you get crispy, crunchy, delicious fried chicken. And it's not greasy. Start to crisp that chicken. Crunch that drumstick. Mm, that juicy flavor. Crisco oil makes your chicken crispy, crunchy. Around 11 country tonight, competition for canine cops in Duluth. These police dogs were trying to win by a nose as they sniffed out suspects hiding inside wooden boxes at Duluth's Wade Stadium. The exercise was all part of the Duluth police training program going on all this week. The cream of this canine crop moves on to regional and national competition. In Austin, it was sign up and get set for some tough competition. The goal to become Miss Minnesota of 1985. Contestants from around the state spent the weekend registering and getting acquainted with each other and with a Miss Minnesota Cabbage Patch doll also in attendance. The competition is set for Saturday. The winner goes on to the Miss America contest in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And shopping at Knollwood these days also brings you into the midst of old-time aeronautics. Youngsters today got an expert to tell them about the old B-32 fighter airplane turret on display. And there were posters of all kinds of airships, from the vicious-looking shark planes to the old double-wing flyers. That show continues through Sunday. Well, Paul, I feel bad and I feel good because of the weather. I feel bad because I watered my lawn this morning, mm -hmm. and now rain is on the way. That's right. But I feel good because I used my neighbor's hose and water. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. Yep. <laughs> I wish Nicely you, done. I wish you'd let me know when you wash your car or water your lawn. I'll, I'll take that into account when dreaming up the 11 outlook here. All right. Only in Minnesota, Joan and Paul, could you have 102 degrees on Saturday and then the following Wednesday have frost. Isn't that incredible? It's going to happen. Incredible. Here is some bad news, too. For those of you heading out to your favorite beach, well, good luck. It's going to be a tad on the soggy side. Low clouds tomorrow at 4,000 feet, 5 to 8 hours of rain. Winds out of the northeast at 10 to 18. Wave heights around 1 foot. Visibility is more than 10 miles, except under 2 miles and some showers. And speaking of showers on Doppler 11, nothing severe. No pink showing up within 60 miles of the cities, but look at all that blue and green. Even some moderate rain showing up south of Mankato near Blue Earth. The chance of getting wet will increase over the next couple of hours. If you feel brave and daring, you may just be able to head out shopping, head out to that softball game this evening without an umbrella. But the chance of rain will increase, and there could be upwards of half an inch to three quarters of an inch of rain before the sun makes a cameo appearance late Wednesday. Earlier today in the backyard, well, we did have some sunshine this morning. We had a high temperature of 66. That should read the low 52, just a trace of precipitation. Sunrise at 526. Right now, cloudy and 64 in the backyard. A southeast wind at 6. The dew point 46. The humidity 52. And the pressure holding steady. On Earthwatch 11, this is our super radar. You can see just how wet it is all across the upper Midwest. A pretty good blemish of rain showing up to our west. Here's what it looks like from on top, from a satellite 23,000 miles above the equator. And as we zoom in, we want to give you a closer look at all those clouds lurking just to our south and west. A storm system is going to develop over Nebraska, slot off just to our south, and as it does, rain will increase overnight. Some of it could be heavy late tonight right through tomorrow. Lows this morning, 70s over the deep south, even some 30s showing up over the northern Rockies and the upper Midwest. Temperatures as of about 5 o'clock this afternoon, 50s where the clouds and rain held in over the Dakotas, 90s across Texas and much of the southeast, 60s for most of 11 country. Now this is what the weather map is going to look like tomorrow. It's going to show a storm system sliding off just to our south and east, and as it does, it's going to produce rain. Some of it could be heavy. All the way from the Dakotas and Minnesota southeastward across the Ohio Valley, a potential for upwards of an inch of rain. Temperatures because of the rain will be quite cool, only in the 60s and 50s over the upper Midwest, while much of the deep south enjoys temperatures well up into the 90s and even some hundreds over the deep south. The weather map will show rain pretty much all across the upper Midwest, the northeast. This fair weather high will finally clear things out long about Wednesday and Thursday. Here's your 11 outlook for tonight. It calls for showers, maybe some thunder, 51 to 56. Grab an umbrella on the way out the door. Cloudy, cool tomorrow, off and on rain, a high in the low 60s. And here's the 11 outlook. Wednesday clearing late, only 61, a frost over northern Minnesota Wednesday morning and Thursday morning. Sunshine Thursday and Friday. Temperatures rebounding back up to normal by the end of the week. Cozy up next to your favorite umbrella. You'll need it this evening and again tomorrow. Joan and Paul.
Friday's looking good, so you're doing all right. Sure does. We're going to keep our fingers crossed. All Thank right. You. Thanks, Paul. Okay. Well, it's time now for dollars and cents, and you're here with that is Mary Stuckey. Mary. Thanks a lot, Paul. Well, drought is causing a severe threat to farmers in western Wisconsin, and the situation could become critical. Daryl Delisay reports from our Wisconsin Bureau. Barnhart's 120 acres of corn is usually knee-high by now. This year, it may not even be that high by the fabled 4th of July. The problem is lack of moisture. There is some moisture down there, but it's getting to the critical part. Byron Barnhart is not alone with his concern. Much of southwestern Wisconsin is on the verge of a drought. And while no one is pushing the panic button yet, the situation is close to critical for the corn and hay crops, which desperately need moisture now. Actually, we've got a point where we can go either way. If we get rain within a week, I would say that our yields probably won't be adversely affected to any great degree. Uh, if we do not get that rain, in other words, if it's two weeks before we get a rain, we could see a rather severe loss in yield, uh, maybe as up as much as 20%. And in Dunn County alone, a 20% loss translates into 50 to $60 million. Daryl Dalizé, News 11, the Wisconsin Bureau. There is one business today that's flying high. Twin Cities-based Northwest Airlines carried record numbers of passengers last month. For the year-to-date, passengers are up about 17% for Northwest. The reasons? According to Northwest officials, more flights, the United Airlines strike, and a burst in international travel due to the strong U.S. dollar. A major decision today affecting the banking industry. The Supreme Court ruled that states may band together to create regional banking systems, systems which often ban large banks headquartered outside the region. The stock market was up a bit today. The Dow Industrials rose about two points to close at 1318. The volume, almost 88 million shares. And that's dollars and cents for today, Paul. All right, Mary, thank, thank you very you. much. When we come right back, we will meet a man who is really for the bird. And we'll take you to a local golf tournament where celebrities swing into action for a very good cause. Tom Ryder will have that when we come right back. Break the ties of tradition. This Father's Day, take the hint. Get Dad something he really wants from Mills Fleet Farm, like a comfortable hammock with stand, only $19.99, or an 11-piece golf club set, just $99.95. And for those hot summer days, the Igloo Little Playmate Cooler is only $7.95 after rebate. For the perfect Father's Day gift, shop where Dad does. Ah, oh, honey, it's just what I wanted. At Mills Fleet Farm. What to do when a computer breaks down. Every computer breaks down eventually, but that's not a problem anymore. Because when you buy your computer from Amerisource and it breaks down, we'll loan you a computer absolutely free. America is coming to Amerisource. Because we don't just sell computers, we put computers to work. Not content with being a world leader in digital watches, Casio has launched a line of sports watches that give you quartz accuracy with hands. Casio's got the quartz for sports. They're high-tech, high-style. They're rugged, water-resistant. Casio's got the quartz for sports. The Casio Sports. Watches you don't have to watch out for. And some even come with an alarm and stopwatch. Casio's got the quartz for sports. The quartz for sports. By and large, most subs are pretty much the same. That's what Doug Blanchard thought until he tried zest on one arm, his deodorant soap on the other. Just, it was clean. That side felt clean. This was rinsed once and it's clean. This one had to be rinsed more to get it clean. I'm surprised. I don't know, this is a more convincing clean. Right on a scale of one to 10, this is a 10. What I thought was a 10, I called a seven. Think all deodorant bars are the same? Try zest. When it comes to feeling clean, zest is best. Minnesota's newest athletes, both the two-legged and the four-legged sort, got their first workout at Canterbury Downs today. Racehorses and jockeys were up with the morning light together to begin regular warm-ups around the track. The sleek horses and their pint-sized riders were watched closely by trainers and coaches as they got used to the track with some slow-paced galloping. The track is set to open June 26th, and tickets for day one are sold out, as you might expect. 
Whether you're a horse or human, nothing like getting up early and going for that early morning run, huh? I disagree, but that's another story. <laughs> I roll out of bed around noon every day. <laughs> I don't start breathing until 10. <laughs> no doubt about that. Well, I did get up and breathe a little bit today. I played in a golf tournament at least a couple of holes, but this is the season for charity golf tournaments galore. And today, the March of Dimes held forth at the Mendocota Country Club in West St. Paul. Now, the list of March and Dimes celebrities was strong as the event is partially sponsored by the NFL Players Association. Here's Scott Studwell of the Vikings, who looks to be much more at home hammering running backs, although that's a pretty good shot there, Scott. And here's a great from the past, the one and only number 81, Carl Eller. From the North Star, Steve Payne will soon have his own charity golf tournament, benefiting the Variety Club Heart Hospital. And North Star Brian Bellows also in search of birdies today. And then there's the one and only Jesse the Body Ventura, who may not be much of a golfer. But I want to tell you something. Let's watch this punt here. When Jesse talks, people listen. Ryther, did you see that putt? Now, I perform in front of the camera. The minute the camera comes out, the body sinks a 15-footer. No sweat. Yeah, Jesse, but how many takes did it take you to get that putt? Twins begin an 11-game road trip tonight in Cleveland amidst more trade rumors. From all indications, the Twins seem willing to part with second baseman Tim Tuffle if they could pick up Cleveland pitcher Burt Blylevin. Wouldn't that be something? Blylevin is scheduled to pitch against the, t the Twins tomorrow night. Now, the reason for the rumors is because of the Twins' record, obviously, seven games under 500, 14 losses out of the last 16 games, but still compared to last year, there is only a two-game difference. Tonight's game is not on television. The starting pitchers, it'll be Viola against Creel at Cleveland. All right, other sports news. Uh, still no word on who's going to be the next coach of the Gopher hockey team. Athletic director Paul Giel held a, uh, told News 11 Sports today that he has not excluded any of the final four candidates, but that South St. Paul's Doug Woog and St. Thomas College coach Terry Abram are indeed the front runners at this point. Giel hopes to have an announcement by later in the week. And a rather small crowd turned out for all-star wrestling at the St. Paul Civic Center last night. And that's probably because, well, it wasn't the strongest card in the world. Now, here are two of the wrestlers who do draw some people, though. Tag team match, Ray the Crippler Stevens and Nick Bockwinkle against Greg Gagne and Steve Olsenoski, the special referee, former U of M All-American football player Leo Nomalini. Even Nomalini gets into the act. I watch him take care of Stevens, but as it turned out, Gagne and Olsenoski lost on a decision. No Molini played college football with the Gophers with Vern Gagne, nonetheless. There's that connection. In some notes, the Boys State High School Class AA Baseball Tournament begins tomorrow at Municipal Stadium in St. Paul, and the Class A portion of the tournament begins Thursday in St. Cloud. And tonight at 10 o'clock, Randy Shaver will introduce us to our News 11 Sports Athletes of the Week. Do you think Jesse really hit that putt on the first try? Yeah, it didn't look too bad right, right in the hole. I say it took at least... I'm glad he's there and I'm here. Yeah, I was going to say, he'll be, out, he'll be out in the parking lot in about five minutes waiting no, for you. No, he made it first time. See you later, Tommy. Tonight's Speaks People report is about a Stearns County man who's flying high because he's got the job he always wanted. As Ken Speak reports, Joe Dobeck has feathered his nest by way of a love for animals. There are 800 ring-neck pheasant chicks in this brooding house, and they need lots of care, the kind of care Joe Dobeck likes to give. Dobeck raises some 4,000 pheasants to release at hunting time. He hatches another 15,000 to sell. That's for his income. There are 14 other kinds of pheasants here for his pleasure. Among them, a reeve pheasant, golden pheasants, a geegee, or yellow golden pheasant, and in the deer yard, a peacock was courting a peahen with that marvelous tail spread wide to impress her. Yep. Joe Dobeck is nuts about animals. Just a lot of, a lot of fun just looking at stuff, and being able to be outside and work with stuff like I've always wanted to do. A lot of kids don't have the opportunity like I did to step in and start something that was already here. I just had to build it back up. Joe Dobeck is 22 years old, but he's been working this farm since he was in the eighth grade. And he thanks his lucky stars that his dad and mom let him get started that early. Yep, Joe Dobeck figures this is the perfect job. It's outside, working with a variety of animals, some of which have become close friends. Ken Speak, News 11, Stearns County. Huh. What a lucky man. Those deer are such gentle, lovingly, wonderful looking animals. Fun to look at, really fun Absolutely. to see that peaceful animal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'll do it for us. Thank you very much for joining us. All right, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Good night. <laughs>
a duke is not what it used to be. Open the house to tourists. <laughs> Good morning. Sold the family silver. Auctioned the 17th duke. Fact is, nearly everything's gone, except the old family favorite, Schweppes tonic. Essence of fresh fruit, cheeky little bubbles. Schweppes of essence. Oh, thank you very much, Your Lordship. My pleasure. Schweppes, the great British bubbly. If you think this bank offers you a no-fee visa or MasterCard with checking like First Federal does, think again. No. This place, they don't even offer free checks like First Federal. No. And at a local bank, you probably won't get all the extra checking services First Federal offers. No. In fact, if you think you can find a checking account that gives you more for your money than our money market checking, don't bank on it. Hmm. First Federal. Check with us and get your money's worth. You may think this is a soap commercial. But it's not. It's Plowed Minnesota's complete bath department. With great summer savings. Like this Visco tub and wall surround. It's a real value. It's just $129.95. Draco shower stalls are easy to install yourself. Sale priced at $164.95. You bet you can. There's lots of wallpaper, too, from 99 cents. And Delmar window blinds are now up to 50% off. Plowed Minnesota's great summer bath sale. Floors, walls, windows, kitchens, and baths direct from the factory to you. Tuesday on Sunrise, the hot weather we've had gives way to a cooler forecast. And we'll have the first in news and the last in sports. That's Tuesday morning on Sunrise.